Today on Learn TV, we're going to talk about what happens when you remove a mirror from a digital SLR without losing picture quality. Hi, I'm Tim. And I'm Tuki, and welcome to Learn TV. Today, we are going to talk about full frame mirrorless. Now, we've done an episode on full frame already. Uh, but right now we're going to talk about full frame mirrorless. So it's about the sensor, is that right Tim? It is basically about the sensor. When we're talking about full frame, it actually harks back to the days of film. So if you look at a standard strip of film, here's a lovely shot of the Colosseum. Um, you can see this is 35mm film and it's the same physical size as the sensor in this full frame camera. So when we refer to full frame, we're talking about a sensor that is 35 yep. millimeter film size. Cool. Now most sensors and digital cameras are actually much smaller than that. Yep. So when you look at even something like our NEX, which have got relatively large sensors, this is what's called an APS-C size sensor. It is about half the size yep. uh, of a full frame sensor. Still very large. When you look at sensors from, um, from most other cameras, in particular compact cameras, they're far smaller. So there's a, a lineup you can see here of full frame APS-C, micro four, four thirds. So well, micro yeah. four thirds, Sony actually don't make any micro four thirds cameras, but this is another interchangeable format, uh, lens format that you might come across. And then the, the one over two thirds of an inch um, sensor is typical of a sort of a mid to high end compact camera. So, so having like a bigger sensor, it emits more light, am I correct? It, capturing more light? Yeah, that's the big thing. So if you can, you know, if you take into consideration that say all of these sensors are the same resolution, so say they're all 20 megapixels, the physical photo sites, which are the individual parts or the light sensors on that on the sensor yeah. are going to be physically larger on the full frame than they will be on on any of the others. Oh, of course, yeah. So more light means uh, the ability to capture photos in, in low light conditions without that grain or that noise yeah. uh, and it also means the ability to use faster shutter speeds and, and other creative advantages as well. So um, there is, uh, you know, that's, that's the first thing about it is you've got this, this sort of physically larger sensors. Um, one thing to note about that is that when you get a lens so yep. like this one here, this is a 35 millimeter lens. Yep. When I put it on these two cameras, if I put it on the, the full frame one, I'm actually gonna get a genuine 35 millimeter shot. Yep. A 35 millimeter is, uh, is just a little bit wider than, than our normal field of view, which is considered around sort of 50 millimeters. The thing with this one is because of that smaller sensor, you have this um, thing called cropping, which basically means that you're going to be cropped further in or zoomed further into the image. We're gonna talk properly about cropping in a later episode, but I just wanted to highlight the, you know, that being a key benefit of, of a full frame camera. Yep. Now, what we were really gonna talk about today though, is the fact that this is full frame and it's also mirrorless. Yep. Yeah, um, when, you, when we're talking about mirrorless, it's talking about comparing it to something like a digital SLR. So here's an old digital SLR. As you can see, if I take the lens off this one, you can see that inside mirror. there yeah. Yeah, is, a, is a little mirror. So what I'll get you to do is show everybody how this mirror actually works. Yep. There we go. Just put oh, that thanks. back on for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. So yeah, so digital SLR, so as, as Tim mentioned, th there is a built-in mirror into this camera. Uh, we actually have like the mechanism here for, for you to, to actually check out. Um, so what actually happens is when the light comes in, it actually bounces onto that mirror, light goes back up and into the optical viewfinder. So the, the big thing about you know, a digital SLR is what you see there, it's exactly what is going through the actual lens. Um, with that mirror, so the light goes up, uh, as soon as you actually take the photo, the mirror lifts up, and the light is actually captured on the actual flicks, sensor. Flicks yeah, it flicks, way, right? it flicks up uh, out of the way. Now, the big thing, uh, as we were talking about before, the big thing about mirrorless is obviously because you don't have that mirror, the camera can be much smaller and much lighter, which is quite nice. Okay, so as you can see here, um, digital SLR versus mirrorless. This is a full frame uh, sensor. This still has an APS-C size sensor as well. So, you know, physical size between the two and also sideways, you can see that, you know, the, the mirrorless is much smaller, which yeah, is quite yeah. nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, um, the other thing about these mirrorless cameras is that because you've got the smaller physical 
um, camera in here and you don't have that space that the mirror takes up, yep. um, you've got what's called a smaller flange back or a shorter flange back. So having that shorter flange back means that in addition um, to making a smaller camera, you can also use a wider range of lenses. Oh, that's quite cool. So you've been familiar with, um, you know, if you go and you buy a, a Canon camera or a Nikon camera, um, you'll know that they have their own lenses, just as Sony does. Yep. Um, and you can't take a Nikon lens and put it onto a Sony camera, unfortunately. Yeah, so that, that's one of the issues with digital SLR because of that it's, mirror yeah. and the distance that you yeah, have. So you've yeah, so really you've really got to bind to a whole system. But having this shorter flange back means that you can get adapters, um, oh. so this sort of thing, um, and it allows you to put virtually any lens on here because you can just adapt the distance in order to get the right focusing, the oh, back, of course, right back yep. focusing distance. So this one here is for um, a Leica lens. So if you see, we'll just put this on. Um, I can now attach that, and now I've got a Sony camera here with a really good Leica prime lens. lens. That is awesome, yeah. Yeah, so you can do the same kind of thing with other lenses as well. This one here is a uh, it's an old Pentax mount, um, a Carl Zeiss lens. So you know, there's a whole lot of stunning lenses that you can put on this um, simply because you've got that shorter flange back. Yeah, so that well. means that you can adapt Canon and Nikon lens. If you you know if you already have all those lenses in your kit, so you, you know yeah. you can just buy a mirrorless camera, have a D adapter, and yeah. Off you go. Absolutely. So what it means is also Sony has a wide range of really quality lenses. Yes. So we talked a little bit about the technicalities of the sensor and the flange back, but you know, on the creative side, it also means uh, having this larger sensor gives you, you know, other advantages. Mm. So there's a couple of things that we want to show you guys. Um, the first thing is bokeh or you know background defocus, some people call. So uh, just with the image that you have on screen here, um, photo taken, you know, with a full frame and a point and shoot. If you have a look at the left hand side of the image, on a point and shoot, the couch at the back is in focus. You know, everything, pretty much everything is in focus. Where with a full frame sensor, you can have this, you know, background defocus or bokeh where the background is out of focus and, you know, that gives you that professional look. Yeah, it does. It looks a lot more pro. Yeah, it, it, does, it does look a lot more pro. So, um, but if we talked about, you know, full frame versus APS-C, uh, you know, the difference is, is not as big, but still, if you, if you have a look at, at this image here, uh, under New Zealand, on, on the, where it says Southern Alps, you'll see that on the full frame, you know, that it, you're starting to have that background defocus, this bokeh, where on the APS-C size, you know, it's still a bit sharp, and as it goes further, you, you're starting to have that blur. So APS-C still gives you good, you know, background defocus, but it's just that having this larger sensor gives you more control uh, over that background defocus. So the difference in this one is really subtle. Absolutely, um, it's, it is. It's something that you actually have to really look for, and one thing we should point out is that these photos were taken with the same lens and the same, same camera settings. Yeah, absolutely. Same um, settings. So same lens. simply by having, the, you know, the, the key point here is that simply by having a larger sensor, it gives you a little bit more control over that depth of field uh, in terms of finding, you know, a point that is in focus at, versus other stuff being that blurred and that, that beautiful sort of bokeh look. Absolutely. Yeah. So one one of the other thing, you know, apart from bokeh, is you know low light. So um, you know, one of the shots that we have here with Tim jumping up and down. Um, just so you know, like those photos were taken on auto, so and with no flash as well. So on the point and shoot, because it was quite low light, as Tim jumped, you can see the image is quite quite blurry, um, and that is because of the you know the size of the sensor. Because it's a small sensor, uh, the camera can't capture enough light to actually have a faster shutter speed compared to on the full frame sensor. Because there's a lot of light hitting the sensor, uh, you know, the camera can have a faster shutter speed and you can have a, a nice sharp image um, mm -hmm. between uh, you know, the, the two shots, which is quite nice. So yeah, in order to achieve the same level of exposure, yep. um, the, the smaller sensor needs to use a longer shutter speed. Exactly, right? which and makes you, things blurry you know, when you don't have a flash. Yeah. Yeah. So Sony is going really seriously and with full frame. Um, yep. And it's something that we're really excited about as uh, enthusiastic photographers <laughs> ourselves. But it's actually really meaningful to, to all levels um, of photographers. Right now, full frame is, I guess, more expensive, obviously. Yep. Um, because of the nature of it, but Sony is introducing a really wide range. Everything from effectively, um, you know, integrated compact cameras um, with with full frame sensors through to the new A7, yep. A7R, which have just been announced, um, the VG900, which is a handy cam using the same system, but again, yeah. So, so to record video, so if you're really into videos and you want to put those adapters yeah, as well, same effect, yeah. yeah so, um, so it's something we're really excited about, and uh, hopefully you've learned a thing or two from this, and we'll see you next time on Learn TV.